Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome, welcome to the online lecture uh, series. So this uh, lecture is part of the earlier lectures which has already been delivered by Mr. Kipgen. So I hope uh, you had a clear idea about it. I am just going to talk about some of these you know, uh, I, uh, questions and the concept which he has already talked about. But I have more of a question, the multiple choice questions so that the exercise will be more easier for you to understand the course. So this course is about understanding the debates, you know, uh, that that's lie in the deeper relationship between ecologies and human society. That is how the human society shapes the ecology, how the human cultures deals with the natures and uh, their processes, and how it creates the meanings out of that interactions. So today I'm just going to present before you some of the you know multiple choice choice questions uh, from the earlier lectures. I will be talking only about introductions today and hope it will help you guys to understand the course in much easier way. As Dr. Kipgan has already talked about the details of the course and this lecture is all about understanding the dynamic relationship between human culture, their ecological surroundings, uh, their cultural processes and their organizational behavior. So uh, what I am going to do here today is that. I have a couple of multiple choice questions which I will present before you and after presenting the questions I will give you the answer as well, but the answers is not marked in the question itself. So answer I will provide you separately. So uh, on the first part of it I am focusing on the concept of ecology, what is ecology, what is environment, what is uh, nature and all those things and in the later, later part of the course I will be talking more of the shift in environmental discourse, especially after 1960s and the emerging debates of sustainable development. So let us begin by looking at uh, some of the basic questions about environment, nature and ecology. So here are some of the multiple choice questions which I will present before you. So the first question goes like this, the relationship of living organisms to one another and to their physical environment is known as. Let me repeat the questions. The relationship of living organism to one another and to their physical environment is known as. So there are four options for this questions. So option number one, environment, nature, society and ecology. So what would be the right answer for it? What would be the correct answer? So the correct answer for this is ecology. So ecology is that kind of systems where relations of living organisms to one another and their physical environment is intimately maintained and controlled. Well, environment is different. Environment is more of a surrounding. Nature is more of where you live, and society is more of a human interactions. So in this case, the answer for the first questions is ecology. So let me go to the second question now. The second question goes like this. The surrounding or the context within which humans, animals, plants and other exists is referred to as, okay, let me repeat the questions. The surroundings or the context within which humans, animals, plants and other exists is referred to as. So think about it, what is it, this, it's a more of a surrounding, you know, it's more of a context within which humans, spaces, animals, plant spaces and other exist together. So there are four options for this question again. So the first one is nature, the second one is society, third one is environment 
and fourth one is ecology. So, what would be the correct answer for this question? Is it nature that that surround that is known as surrounding or the context within which humans, animal, and plants coexist, or is it society? It might be society also, or is it ecology or is it environment? So, the correct answer for this is environment, because as I told you earlier, environment is the surroundings, you know or the context within which humans, animals, plants and other organisms coexist together with each other. So, the first, first one was ecology, where the you know relationship of living organism to one another was determined uh, and the physical environment is maintained and the second one is environment, you know environment is more of a surrounding the context within which the humans, animals, plants and other coexist. The third question goes like this. The physical world around us, you know, which is currently seen as fragile and threatened by human technology and development and not having the quality of living organism is popularly known as. So, this question is quite problematic, you know, and is quite easy as well. So, what I would like to do is I would like to repeat the questions once more before you, so that you can get the sense of the uh, questions. The question goes like this the physical world around us you know which is currently seen as fragile and threatened by human technology and development and not having the qualities of living organism is popularly known as so there are three options for this questions one is animate another is inanimate and third one is industrial city so what would be the answer for this questions is it animate or is it inanimate or is it industrial city you know industrial city is a city where uh, you know human technologies and industries uh, are rampant and where humans i mean where human is dominated by the technology so here the question says the physical world around us which is currently seen as fragile and threatened by human technology and development and not having the qualities of living organisms is popularly known as so i think there are three questions, uh, three answers for these questions. So, the correct one, let me tell you the correct one. The correct one is about inanimates, inanimates, that is non living object. Because here they are talking more of a non living object, we are not talking about the living object, we are talking about the non living object. Whereas, animate is more of a living object. So, industrial city is more of an industries, but we are talking about the physical world, you know, around us. You know, which is which is completely th uh, under threat, a threat by human technologies and development, and which which doesn't have the qualities of living organism. That is, the living organism uh, is inanimate. So here, the answer is inanimate. So this is the third questions. I hope you guys are uh, following it. So let me move on to next questions. So this question goes like this. What kind of system maintain the functioning of ecological community together as a unit within its environment? So, this is very interesting questions. So, uh, here the question is talking more of a system, you know, which maintain the functioning of ecological communities like, you know, living community, species, plant, animals, even the humans together as a union, unit within its environment. So, earlier I have talked about what is environment and what is ecology. So, here I am asking about this kind of system, you know, which maintains the functioning of this ecological community together as one unit. So, within its particular environment or surrounding or context. So, there are three options for this questions. So, option one is natural system, option two is biological system and option 3 is ecological system. I hope you guys are getting the correct answer sense by now. So, you know the natural systems, biological system and ecological systems are three different systems, you know natural systems manage the natural things whereas, biological system is more of a determining the human biology or any living biology. So, on the other hand, the ecological systems is more of a systems which determined 
the ecology and environment. So, the correct answers for these questions would be ecological system, yes. So, ecological system that means the ecological system is a system you know which maintain the functioning of their living organism that is ecological community together as one unit within its certain particular environment. So, till now I have discussed about some of the important issues let me revise it. Uh, first one I have talked about ecology you know what is ecology. So, ecology is more of a relationship of living organisms to one another and to their physical environments. And the second what I had talked about is about environment you know where I, where I have told you that environment is more of a surrounding or the context you know within which humans, plants and animal other coexist together. So, first one is first one is ecology, second one is environment and the third one is I talked about the inanimate world or inanimate object that is the non living object and the fourth one I talked about the ecological system. So, this system is a ecological system actually is a relationship between the environment and ecology as I have talked about in first question what is ecology that is the relationship of living organisms and the second question is I have talked about environment that is the surrounding. So, together they constitute the ecological system where various living organisms coexist to one another as one particular unit within one particular environment or context. Okay, so, let me move to another questions. So, this you know like uh, the next questions talked more about the approaches to understand uh, ecology you know that is the theoretical frameworks for ecology. So, here there are four types of you know four ways of looking at ecology that is biotic component a biotic component producers, consumers and decomposers as well, but I have not included decomposers right now. So, this uh, theoretical frameworks help us to understand how ecological system functions and de depend on one another. So, the first question in this section is like you know non living chemicals and physical parts of the environment that affect living organisms and the functioning of ecosystem is known as. So, I will repeat the question again non living chemicals ok it is a non living chemicals and physical parts of the environment that affects living organisms non living objects, but affecting living organisms and the functioning of ecosystem is known as. So, there are four options for this questions one is uh, biotic uh, components two is abiotic components, three is producers and four is consumers. So, what would be the correct answer for this? So, just think in a very you know like logical way that is a non living non living object that is non living chemicals or and physical parts you know of the environment that is which does not have life, but it affects the living organisms or life of the ecosystem. What is it about? So, the correct answer for this would be abiotic components, because abiotic components is more of a you know non living object, it deals more with the non living or physical part of the environment, whereas biotics produces, whereas biotic is more of a living object you know like living organisms in the ecosystem. So, I hope you get the sense of this questions that is the physical part of the environment or non living part of the environment affecting the living organism is known as abiotic components. So, let me move to I think I am going quite fast. So, let me let me move to another question even though. So, the next uh, you know next questions in this sections is about as goes like this plants and bacteria that is living organisms that makes their own food and do not obtain energy for other organisms is known as. So, this is very critical this is a components of ecosystem you know theoretical frameworks for ecology. So, he, uh, previous question I talked about the non living chemicals or object of the environment, but now I am talking about the plants and bacteria that is the living organisms you know that makes their own food and who do not depend on other uh, for their energy who do not depend on other organisms for the energies or for their food. So, what is this known as that there are three components I mean there are three options for this question consumers, 
producers and decomposers so you, you have to know what what is the functions and of each of these components in the ecosystem so what does consumers do what does producers do and what does decomposer do if you know this very clearly you will easily find out the correct answer for this questions so okay but even then let me tell you the correct answers so the correct answer for this is producers you know producers in the ecosystem is that components that that make their own food you know and they they doesn't they do not depend on other organisms for the energy or for their food that's that is that is why they are called as producers you know producers are those who produce so here plants and bacteria that is the living organisms that makes their own food and do not obtain energy from other organisms is known as producers earlier i talked about abiotic but producers is more of a biotic component you know that is plants and bacteria that is the living organisms anyways keep in mind that the producers produce their own food in ecosystem and does not depends on other organisms for their food so uh, i hope you get this a uh, change of this question so let me move to another questions quickly so another question goes like this which organisms in ecosystem utilize organic material manufactures by producers the question is very simple you know because in earlier questions previous questions i have talked about producers they produce their own food and does not depends on other for their living or for their energy but this question follows the continuations of this questions of that questions you know like like name the organisms in ecosystem which utilize organic materials already manufactured by producers that is the it depends on producers and there are three options for this questions one is producers consumers and decomposers so producers will not be the answers as you know so this so the answer i mean so the options became more easier that there is only two options consumers and decomposers so just think about it in a logical way like producers who producers produce their own food so who will utilize that organic materials produced by producers similarly in market system producer produce the product and who will buy that product customer right so here in ecosystem the answer will be consumers that is those who consume they are con they are known as consumers so so i am i'm saying that consumers uh, i mean consumers organisms in ecosystem uh, utilize the organic products or organic materials that is manufactured by producers in the process you know of ecosystem so you have got the sense of producers and consumers so the next questions the answers for the next question i hope you already got it it's about decomposers i have already given you the answers but 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 you have to know what decomposers is about and what decomposers do and how it contribute to the functionings of the ecosystem so let me go to the another questions so the this question goes like this how does decomposers or bacteria and fungi in ecosystem contribute to the functioning of the system that is the ecosystem so the, i told you that producer produce food consumers obtain food from the producers but what does decomposers do decomposers are mostly of fungi and bacteria so what does how does they help to the functioning of the ecosystem how does they contribute to the functioning of this ecosystem so there are four a uh, three option for this questions so let me read out the option for you the first options they break down dead plants and animals in the ecosystem they also break down the waste pops of other organisms and helps the plant to get essential nutrients they break down dead plants and animals you know they also break down the waste of other organisms and helps the plants to get essential nutrients in the ecosystem so this is option number 1 and the option number 2 is like you know uh, they helps in bringing producers to make their own food by providing them light and energy they helps in bringing producers to make their own food by providing them lights and energy they help i mean the third question the third options they help consumers to obtain food produce food through producers i mean the questions are slightly interrelated you know 
but you have to know what actually is the functions of functionings of the decomposers in ecosystem. So, you know like uh, uh, if I have to talk about decomposers, I will talk more of bacteria and fungi, how it contribute to the functioning of the ecosystem. But since I do not have that much time to deal with bacteria and fungi as I think as Kibgen, Dr. Kibgen has already talked about in his lectures. So, this is just a you know like a objective multiple choice question, but I hope it will clear your concept. So, think about it what does decomposers do in ecosystem. So, let me go back to previous questions to make you to make you understand more clearly. So, see consumers that is consumers is a living organism that is plant and bacteria that makes their own food and do not obtain energy from other organisms. So, that is the consumers right consumers they produce the food right. So, what do producer do producers utilize organic materials manufactured by producers in the ecosystem. So, simply consumers uh, uh, con sorry sorry consumers producer produce the food consumers utilize organic materials. So, what does the decomposers do? Let me give you the correct answer for this. You know, the decomposers in the ecosystem actually break down dead plants and animals. So, first one is the uh, answers. Decomposers actually helps in breaking down dead plants and animals. That that's why they are called as bacteria and fungi, right? They also break down the waste product of the organi other organisms and helps the plants to get essential nutrients in the ecosystem. So, this uh, you know like biotic, abiotic, producer, consumer, decomposers these are the broad theoretical frameworks to understand the ecology or ecosystem that is how ecosystem functions and maintain the, the systematic structures you know and how each of each of the organisms have, have their own respective functions to play where each of the organisms contribute to the functioning of the ecosystem larger ecosystem through either by producing or consuming or by decomposing. So, I hope you got getting the clear sense of the lectures I mean the questions. So, let me let me quickly move to another question now the questions goes like this the relative balance of nutrient cycle energy flows and species and compositions in ecosystem is commonly known as I have already talked about what is ecosystem, what is the components of ecosystem. Now, the, this question is more of the conceptuals of the ecosystem that is the relative balance of nutrient cycle that is producer, consumer, decomposers they, they have to be in relative balance that is the relative balance of nutrient cycles, energy flows and species and composition in ecosystem is commonly known as. So, there are four options for this question. First one is ecological conservations. Are we talking about the conservations that uh, conservations would help to the relative balance in the ecosystem? Second one is ecosystem homeostasis. So, are we talking about ecological homeostasis? Third one is ecological imbalance or are we talking about the imbalance of the ecosystem that is how ecological got imbalance or none of the above. So, the answer you know the answer for this question is like uh, the uh, the let me repeat the question the relative balance of nutrient cycles energy flows and species and compositions in ecosystem is commonly known as the correct answer for this would be ecosystem homostasis. Okay, so, let me just summarize the from the beginning the first four four or five questions talked about the basic concept of ecology and uh, and the rest talked about the theoretical frameworks for understanding ecology. So, now I would like to move more on the changing discourse on environments that is like in that is how there was a shift and the discourse of understanding environments and environmentalism across the globe. So, what are the factors that contributes to the to the emergence of the new environmentalism. So, what are the factors that contributes to the awareness of the new environmental and social problems or what are the factors that contributes to the debates of global sustainability which we are still debating on. So, I will just talk about the basic concept about uh, the what is, what is new environmentalism and all sort of things, but 
you have to understand the connections that is uh, the the shift in the discourse you know anyways let me goes back to the uh, uh, equations so the equations for this section is like which period is known as the new environmentalism in the discourse of environmental study that is 1950s 1960s 1970s and 1980s so which of this following decades let me put it as a decade which of the following decades is considered as the you know birth of new environmentalism in the discourse of environmental study so there are four options 50s 60s 70 and 80 so i think the correct answer for this would be 1960 yeah of course it's a 1960 1960 is the decades where the concept of new environmentalism emerged across globe and that changed the understanding of the in entire in entire environmental discourse that is uh, it it's bring a new discourse uh, from the earlier discourse of understanding ecology uh, or environments or you know like any kind of social ecological natural problems so let me move to another question now so what is new environmentalism then how does one understand new environmentalism questions so there are four options for this questions the option number one preservation of wilderness and conservation of resources this new environmentalism means preservation of wilderness and conservation of our resources option number two building of legislatures and regulation concerning the consumption of nature are are we talking about building of new legislatures and new regulation concerning the consumption of nature or answer number three an awareness of the ties you know between environmental and social problems direct relationship between environmental problem and human security and the critics of government and society so which one would be the correct answer for this questions so what does new environmentalism means you know for me the uh, this 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 answers it's quite interrelated you know i cannot say completely that uh, this is the correct answer or this one is the correct answer but still then still then there there is a differences in the in the in the options so first one is about preservation of wilderness and conservation of resources that is we have to preserve our resources for future use or we have to we have to do proper conservation of our resources so the second one is about building legislatures and new legislations a new regulation concerning the consumption of nature that is it's talking only of nature but third one is about the awareness of the ties between environment and social problems direct relationship between environmental problems and human security and the critics of government and society so the correct answer for this would be c you know the option number c that means the new environmentalism means that it's a discourse you know it's which emerged in 1960s and which creates uh, awareness of ties between environmental and so social problem that is that that is it's try to say that environmental problem is not an independent problem it has a close connections and ties with the social problem it's more of a human problem it's more of a social problems you know so environment uh, environment doesn't functions in its own independent has uh, i mean it has intimate close connections with social problems it has direct direct relationship with uh, human security you know and it, uh, and 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 this environmental new environmentalism is also about critics you know critic critiquing the government and society that is the government is not able to preserve and uh, you know understand the environmental question in a much deeper way and the societies are not able to con uh, con con not able to preserve their natures in a much deeper way so the this new environmentalism is more more of an awareness you know that awareness that explain the ties between environmental as well as social problem that is how both are related so this is the questions of environmentalism i mean new environmentalism that emerged in 1960s so let me move to another question now so this question says like this name the book that 
brought to public attention the dangers of environmental problems to public health, such as the use of DDT and sparked the beginning of modern environmentalism. So, so the question is saying that there is one particular book, you know, like which, uh, which, which brought to our public attention the dangers of environmental problems and which shaped the debate of new environmentalism. So, which is that book? So, option number one, Rachel Carson's Silent Spring. Is it the book? Is it that book which shaped the pop, uh, which shaped the uh, which shaped the beginning of modern environmentalism? And option or option number two, Charles H. E.'s Environmental Impact Assessment: A Guide to Best Professional Practice. And option number three, Ramachandra Guha, The Unquiet Woods. So, which one is the correct answers for this questions? So, which books shaped the? I mean beginning of the modern environmentalism in 1960s. So, let me give you the answer for this. The answer for this question is Rachel Carson's Silent Spring. So, this letter uh, Rachel Carson's Silent Springs, I mean is the books that brought to our public attention in 1960s the dangers of environmental problems and you know, environmental pollutions to public health. That is how environmentally created pollution is affecting our human health that is and how such as the use of DTT and uh, such as the use of DTT like how, how the use of DTT is creating the pollutions and how the growing industrializations and growing mechanizations of the human world is create is contributing to the to the growing pollutions of the uh, growing pollutions of the environment and how it is affecting the human health and these are the questions you know which which he tried to bring up in this book and this shaped the beginning of the new environmentalism debate so this book Rachel Carson Silent Springs is one of the important and seminal books and the studies of the new environmentalism okay so let me go to another questions quickly so this questions goes like this which among the following is the law that determined the mississippi river that determine how the Mississippi River is managed. So, before going to this question, let me tell you that you know the 1960s new environmentalism created a new awareness in the perceptions of the peoples towards their society, towards their environment, and that's brought a new kind of discourses in the entire globe regarding the use of the environment, the natures, the resources, and other. So. The government become more concerned, the society become more critics to the government, the people become more critical to the government regarding the use of the resources, regarding the management of the resources. So, the government on the other sides was trying to bring the new regulations and new new act, you know, to deal with the society. That is how the after 1960s, the discourse of the environmental changed completely. So, we have to, you know, like understand how this Mississippi Rivers Management Act um, Greenpeace Act and all these th things came up uh, after 1970s. So, anyways, the question is like this: Which among the following is the law that determines how the Mississippi River is managed? Answer so, uh, question and options for this questions is number one: Greenpeace 1971, UN Conference on Human Development 1972, the Federal Water Water Pollution Act FWFC in 1972, Environmental Management and Coordination Act 1999. So, think about it which 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 among the following is the law that determine how Mississippi river should be managed or have to be managed or is managed anyway. So, out of this four options the correct one is option number C that is Federal Water Pollution Control Act passed in 1972. This act determined how the Mississippi rivers should be managed and uh, it is a new it is a, a new discourse to the environmental study. So, with this let me move to another questions. So, this is also more related with the Mississippi River Management Act. So, in which year? the Mississippi River Management Act was passed to manage Mississippi River. 
So options, there are uh, four options for these questions. The first one is 1966, second one is 1976, third one is 1986 and the fourth one is 1996. So, think about the this question. So, which when did uh, this upper UMRMA act was passed to manage Mississippi river? Is it 66, 76, 86 or 96? The correct answer for this is 1986. That is in 1986, uh, the upper Mississippi river management act UMRMA was passed to manage the Mississippi rivers. Okay, uh, so let me let me go back to another questions quickly. So, when did the National Environmental Policy Act (NEPA) was passed? So, why I'm talking more of this act policies and other is because it's to make you understand how the new regulations and new discourse has come up in the environmentalism studies after new environmentalism of 1960s. So, when did this National Environmental Policy Act NEPA was passed? 1967, 1968, 1969, 1970. Okay, uh, let me explain you briefly about what is this act about. The purpose of this act are to declare a national policy which will encourage productive and enjoyable harmony between man and his environment, to promote effort which will prevent or eliminate damage to the environment and biosphere and stimulates the health and welfare of man to increase the understanding of the ecological system and natural resources importantly to the nation and to establish a council on environmental policy. It is more of a national act you know like where national policy will be encouraged you know and where uh, encouraged and where uh, harmonical relationship between man and his environment will be encouraged. So, this kind of understanding uh, understanding will be discussed more in more more in the course on e cultural ecology which we will come up in next uh, next lecture series or in next sessions uh, where we will talk more about how cultures and ecology are interrelated and how it produce the meaning out of it what is traditional knowledge what is indigenous knowledge what are the ways of dealing with the land and questions so when did the national environmental policy act nepa was passed so, there are four options for this question. One is 1967, one is 1968, 1969 and 1970. The correct answer for this would be about 1969. In 1969, the National Environmental Policy Act was passed. Okay, now let me move to another question. So, in which year uh, did, did the first odd day was celebrated? As you know everyone what is odd day and why it is celebrated. So, the, uh, so the option is 69, 1970, 1971, 1972. So, in which year did the first odd day was celebrated? Because the, it was uh, the odd day came up as an awareness of the importance of this earth you know environments, natures and the living organism in this earth. So, we have to celebrate our odd day. So, which year the odd day was first celebrated. So, the answer for this question would be 1970 you know, like where the first odd day was celebrated. Anyways, let me move to another question quickly. When and where did the UN conferences on human development took place? So, when and where did the human uh, UN conference on human development took place? So, there are four options 71 Geneva, 72 Stockholm, 73 New Delhi, 74 Rio de Janeiro. So, what would be the correct answer for this question? So, I think the first UN conference on human development took place in 1972 Stockholm. So, with this let me go back to another question. So, what is the main objectives of polluter Pay principle OCD 1971. So, what is the main objectives of polluters pays principles OCD 1971 act? I think Ibn has talked about this all this uh, all this concept. You know, there are four options for this questions. One is to make the party responsible for producing pollution, responsible for paying damages down to the natural environment, to create 
Number two, to create awareness globally about deforestation. Number three, to establish international law to check water system. Number four, none of the above. So it's very simple, you know. Like the, uh, I mean, like the options itself give you the uh, answers. None of the above cannot be the answers in this case. To establish international law to check water system. So it's a polluted taste principles. It it should not be on the water system. To create awareness globally about deforestation. Of course, it's not about deforestation. Then the answer would be the option number A. That is the objectives of pollution polluter pace principle or OECD 1971 is to make the party responsible for producing uh, pollutions responsible for the paying damages down to the natural environment okay I have now few questions left so let me quickly go uh, and finish it off so then I will move to next questions so this one is about you know like is a match of correct I mean select the correct match out of the three. So one talked about disasters and one talked about years. So what which in which year the which disaster happened? Omoko Cadiz oil spills the cost of Britannia. Brit is it in 1977? Number two, three miles island nuclear accident in Pennsylvania. Is it about 1979? or Bhopal gas tragedy in India in 1983. So, what would be the you know like what would be the correct answer for this questions? So, let me give you the correct answer for this question. The correct answer for this question is 1979 three, three miles island nuclear incidents in Pennsylvania. You know like this three, three miles island nuclear uh, incidents was the most significant incident in nuclear commercial power plant history you know. Uh, so, it happened in the year 1979 and another let me give you the year for another another match as well. The, the Bhopal gas tragedies in India happened in 1984, Amoco Caddy's oil spill the coast of Britannica happens in 1978. So, move, let us move to another questions. When did ozone hole discovered for the first time and in which year the ozone hole discovered for the first time in the history of environmentalism? I am talking more of new environmentalism shift, how this act came out, how this dangers of climate change, ozone hole was discovered and what were the, what, I mean what are the impact of ozone holes and all these things. But I am just talk, going to talk about when did it discovered for the first time. When did the ozone hole discovered for the first time? 1984, 1985, 86, and 87. Okay, let me explain you briefly what is ozone hole depletions. You know, like this ozone hole is a layer, you know, that and that resides in the stratosphere and surround the entire Earth. I mean, there is a there is a region in the ozone uh, ozones, you know, that is marked by thin uh, thin layering of the ozone ozone hole in high altitude, uh, especially in, cheaply in winter, attributed to the chemical reactions of CFCs, chlorophorous carbons, and other atmospheric pollutants. That is, it 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 is caused because of the resulting increase in ultraviolet ultra ultraviolet lights at ground level. Uh, ground level and this ozone hole or this ultraviolet uh, rise might cause to the skin cancers to the human. So, when did this first, when did this concept of ozone hole depletion first discovered? So, it is in the year 1985. So, in 1985 the first ozone hole layer was discovered. So, let me move to another questions quickly. In which year did the Montreal protocol adopt it? 1966, 70s, 86, 87, 88, 89. So, what is Mont Montreal Protocol Act or Mo what is Montreal Protocol? You know, Montreal Protocol is an international treaty designed to protect this ozone layer which I have talked about na, by facing out the production of numerous substances that are responsible for ozone depletion. So, it tries to control and regulate the uh, productions of numerous substances that are that are causing I mean that are responsible for ozone hole depletion. So, this Montreal uh, protocol when was it first adopted? In which year did the Montreal protocol act first adopted? So, it is 
adopted in the years 1987. Okay, I hope you got a T5 is the ozone hole depletion, and T7 is the Montreal Protocol Act. So, let me go to another questions. This one is more about match the following. So, match the correct answer that one is decade and one is discourse. In which decade, the dis which discourse took place? 1960s, Green Revolutions in India. Is the Green Revolution in India took place in the decade 1960s or 1970s? Our 1970s birth of new consciousness movements, groups, civil rights, women's right, environmental rights, and all these things. Is it on the 1970s? And the op next option is 1980s. That is introductions of sustainable development. That is, we have to produce. We have to work for sustainable development. So we have to think for sustainable futures. Does it come up? Came up in 1980s. 1990s rise of ecofeminism. So, which one will be the correct answers out of it? So, for me, not for me, but uh, like for these questions, the correct answers would be 1980s debate of sustainable development. That is, in 1980s, the world realized that our future is very scarce and we have to produce, we have to work for sustainable productions and sustainable development in order to have a sustainable futures. That sort of awareness emerged in 1980s and this rise of this awareness uh, rise of this uh, and this you know like coming up new regulations, the disasters, all these things is together known as the new environmental discourse. So, let me move to next questions. I hope this might be the last question as well. So, let me quickly go and finish it off for this session. The, the last questions for this session is about oh, the sustainable development strategies that is UK sustainable strategies. When did the UK sustainable strategy published? So, in which year the UK sustainable development strategy was published or adopted? The option for this is 1998, 1999, 1989, 1979. So, the correct answer for this would be 1979 that is in 19 no sorry 1999 that is in 1999 the UKs realized that we have to work for sustainable development and that is how they, they, they adopted the strategies of UKs strategy sustainable development. So, with this I complete uh, the today's lectures on environmental ecology and society hope it's, it's, it is it is it might help you guys and hope you guys have, might have enjoyed so i'll see you in next lectures till then bye see you